Well, happy Father's Day to all you fathers and father types. There are many single parent households in our society who are fulfilling both roles. So we want to send a warm greeting to them as well. We're so proud of the wonderful work that you're doing in God's great kingdom, you know, raising children in this post-pandemic environment and giving sound advice in ways that will be received by others is not an easy job. So parents, I commend you for your commitment to tilling God's garden so that it bears fruit worthy of praise. So it's Father's Day, huh? <laughs> What's in the name Father? What does it mean to be called a father? We use that word in so many ways that I decided to do what I normally do, which is look it up in the dictionary. And I was surprised to see so many definitions. But the one that caught my eye the most was father, an important figure in the origin and early history of something, usually something big, a force that propels the movement of something which creates a new beginning. That's a father. Even more surprisingly, it didn't mention gender or age. Just the fact that one's being fosters something great. Something great in the world. Something that opens doors of opportunities for others. That's a father figure. I see a lot of those father type figures right here in this congregation and in God's kingdom of glory. <coughs> Speaking of kingdoms, I have a question for any biblical scholars that may be with us today, either here, present, or online. Does this message that we heard in our gospel lesson today of the kingdom of God seem to come up pretty often? Was the parable of the mustard seed or another parable about the kingdom of God just heard a short while ago? Or is it my imagination? Whatever the answer to that question is, understanding the concept of the kingdom of God must be so vitally important that we keep hearing about it constantly in our readings. So maybe we should talk about this for a minute. Our gospel lesson says that if we're trying to gain an understanding and get a good grasp on what this kingdom thing really is, using the mustard seed example might be a good idea. Now, I hope that when you came in, you picked up a little packet that was out there with our bulletins of mustard seeds. If you didn't, there's still a few back there left. And those little tiny packets, and there's three mustard seeds in each packet. Now, you know if you pick up a packet and it has four seeds in it, it must mean there's something special you're supposed to do. <laughs> Jesus said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? He said, it's like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all seeds on earth, yet when sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that birds of the air can make nests in its shade. That's a powerful seed. Would you agree? In other words, the kingdom of God is such a powerful, non-visible force in our lives, in our being, which can and will provide us with all the foundational things we need to grow like a tall bush which came from nothing. At least in the eyes of others, it came from nothing. 
What he's really talking about is you and me. He's talking about us and the force that's called the kingdom of God that's within us. You know, many of us in our society, doesn't matter where we live, many of us growing up may have felt that we were so insignificant. Perhaps we were told we didn't measure up or we didn't have the skills or the knowledge or the motivation or even the lineage to become a mighty bush. Because in the eyes of some, we were nothing. We were invisible. It didn't matter how wealthy we were or what color we were, many of us grew up feeling like we were not good enough in some way. But Jesus said, no matter how small you may have been or still be in your mind, there's room for you to grow in the kingdom. And planting your seed there is like using miracle grow or your money back. Come on, mighty bush. It's time for us to grow. It's like a father figure with the tiniest of thoughts which take root and grows into a massive, a massive source of nourishment to sustain and soothe the people. Oh, what a feeling. If you've never felt that way, I, I encourage you to begin planting in God's kingdom. Because having a kingdom consciousness is unbelievably powerful. Why powerful? Because it has a great effect on a multitude of people. I guess that's why we call Chaucer the father of English poetry. Adam Smith, the father of modern economics, and good old Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, Thelonious Monk, and Earl Hines, the fathers of modern jazz. Because their works have inspired and moved people to a higher level of functioning in God's kingdom. Fatherhood. An inward and ever-growing imagination of the Spirit of God one which expresses itself outwardly for the glory of God. We can all be fathers by that definition. When you get a chance, would you think about this kingdom consciousness thing Jesus is talking about and how you can plant your tiny little seed? Perhaps the one thought that was so insignificant in the kingdom to grow and grow so that it puts forth its branches so large that it sustains a multitude of people? If you find that you're having trouble figuring out where or how to plant your seed, just go ahead and plant it with someone else's. There's lots of people in here who have seeds already planted. Or plant it with one of ours here at St. Thomas. If it's okay, I'd like to ask you for some help. No, I'm not going to ask you for any money this Sunday. Watch out next. We need at least five people, five, to help us continue the Nori Initiatives. You know the thing we started here last fall at St. Thomas, the live streaming intern, the cafe intern from the Christiana School District? It has developed to the point where it needs a small group of individuals to help work on developing procedures to collaborate with other entities within our church and the larger church community and to help these initiatives to run a little more smoothly. 
now our dear sister Joan here, has graciously offered to set up a committee of people. We need at least five to plan and direct and to help obtain financing for the activities of the Nori Initiative for these children. Financing is just one concern. There's many concerns that we want to take a look at. But even financing should be easy because simply using the change sitting in our ashtrays in our cars would cover the cost of the program for the children for a whole year. Imagine that. The money that's in my ashtray in my car, I constantly want to get rid of because it's annoying. I hate pennies. So I invite you to plant one of your seeds with this initiative to help out just five kingdom consciousness people can grow this tiny seed of hope for children into a mighty bush that expands throughout the entire diocese. The bishop came here and he got so excited about it. The Christiana School District is so excited about it that they wrote up a big thing in their newsletter. I'm still waiting for them to send me a copy of it. And I know we're excited about it as well. So will you help? Will you give us some of your expertise, some of your knowledge to direct this thing, to keep it flowing? It has gotten to the point I can't handle it by myself anymore. I need help. Father's got a long list of stuff he's waiting for me to do. I can't even get to it. So please, free me up so I can get out of trouble. <laughs> if you are interested in lending a hand as little as one hour a month or one hour every two months, please let Joan, myself, or Father Howie know. We would, we would love to have you join us. May God bless your tiny little seeds, and may they lead to a fatherly influence in this world. Amen.